I grew up in Cape Town in uh, a little nondescript suburb known as Kalesrafi. I grew up very close to a set of railway tracks. As a toddler, I would run out and see the trains come by. And we even had this steam train come by that was for the tourists. And I think that was the moment I fell in love with all things transportation technology and that seed was first planted in me. I had a modest upbringing, but I always had what I needed. My mom had a job, she was a teacher, but I didn't have to go very far to see that very South African reality. The fact that people's lives would evolve very, very differently based on the opportunities that were available to them. With a few really good schooling opportunities, I was fortunate to fulfill my dreams of working as an engineer. In fact, the childhood dream of being an inventor. I was a part of the inaugural class at African Leadership Academy up in Johannesburg. I was then really fortunate to gain acceptance to Harvard University and went over to the US to do my undergraduate study there. Immediately after I graduated, consulting work saw me traveling to East Africa where for the first time I experienced this complete deficit in infrastructure. As we journeyed further and further from the major roads, we just saw the economic activity in total decline. People didn't have the opportunity to be participants in the economy, to be active consumers and producers. People's lives were transformed by the level of road access they had. And that stuck with me. Why are we not doing this with delivery drones? Why are we not going out into areas of great need, scaling up their ability to carry payloads? I found myself going down the rabbit hole of the various drone companies that were existence, what they were working on, and most importantly, the question, why were they not doing this at larger scale? I realized that scaling up standard drones to a size that would allow them to do more mainstream work would be cost prohibitive. And eventually, we landed upon airships. These are large balloons, you may know them as zeppelins or blimps. The question became, could we scale down airships to do the work that drones could not? And today I'm very pleased to say we have done that. Cloudline builds autonomous airships that provide a new form of efficient monitoring and logistics. No commercial drone can match our performance and no manned aircraft can beat our cost or carbon efficiency. As you can imagine, making an airship fly in the most remote places is an incredibly difficult task. It's really exciting for us to actually provide a platform where people can have all of the experiences of solving these really difficult challenges, but also getting really deep into some of the technical work that we do at Cloudline. The real superpower of what we've developed here is tremendous efficiency. In terms of efficiency, we've got our lifting gas keeping us in the air as opposed to conventional aircraft that need to spend energy to stay in the air. We get our mechanical structure from the pressure of the lifting gas. Any change in temperature, change in air pressure has an influence on the lifting gas. So we need to implement the autonomy to deal with those changes. We've gone from our very first scale prototype that had an all-up weight of just seven kilograms to an aircraft that can now carry triple that number, just over 20 kilograms at sea level as its useful payload. That's really important because today in drone delivery, what's commercially available is typically in the range of one to three kilograms. So we're already dealing with multiples of that. Our platform is able to remain airborne on battery charge for up to 10 hours at a time in good weather. If we add to that the solar capability, which we've subsequently built in, we can remain flying persistently for as long as you have sunshine hours. And in the near future, we'll also be looking at adding fuel cells which will in turn allow us to fly through the night and potentially even on multi-day missions. That kind of endurance is unheard of in aircraft of this scale or even this price class. Some of the examples of what we can do with this aircraft is do aerial monitoring so that farmers can image their crops and get better yields. We can fly over long pieces of linear infrastructure like our railways, power lines and roadways and ensure that we can maintain that crucial infrastructure. We've also got an amazing ability to get medicines out to rural communities, to bring back testing diagnostics that have to go to centralized labs. We could also provide them with a channel to produce a crop or an artisanal product that they can then send back to a central market. 
What we'd really like to see is Cloudline airships operating globally, where they've reduced the cost of access to basic human needs, replaced and substituted heavy carbon intense activities and brought in a completely emissions free solution. And where they can connect communities and economies and people who have been disconnected from each other to each other, to central markets and to the rest of the world. For us to be able to tap into those markets, but then also bring really critical skills as well as products into those communities is going to be game changing. We're literally unlocking parts of the world that have been forgotten. At Cloudline, we're building a more connected world and we hope you'll join us in doing so.